Why don't we open the meeting of the Newcastle Environmental Review Board for March 20th, 2023, except it's not March 20th. It's March 27th. Um, Okay, the first, first order of business, uh, since we had an informal meeting last time without the requisite quorum present, uh, we looked at the minutes, but were unable to adopt them formally. Uh, so uh, I, I move we approve the minutes from the, the January 23rd meeting. Can we, can we move them both together? We should be able to. Okay. Then let me amend that motion to include the February 27th minutes as well. Okay, do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I don't see anybody. The minutes are adopted. Um, again, uh, because we had a, an informal kind of preliminary meeting uh, a month ago without a quorum where we uh, went through and talked about almost, I think, all of the items on the agenda tonight, Dennis, or is, is it everything? Uh, the first four out of five covered the February 27th meeting. Except for the Kitchell Road. Right. That was from, uh, I believe, a September uh, meeting of last year, and they, as you uh, received and their representative is here to uh, present the mitigation plan for that. Okay. Great. So then uh, let's call them in order. Uh, and we'll start with uh, 10 Gray Rock Park Road. Dennis, do you want to give us a quick run through? Uh, just as a refresher as to that application, where we were, and what, if anything, has happened since? Sure. Um, so even from reviewing the minutes, and I didn't recall that there were any uh, resubmissions uh, required. Um, you know, they're building a low deck uh, with a hot tub spa. The hot tub's entirely out of the wetlands buffer, just uh, you know, a segment of the deck. and. Get this some pea gravel landing uh, area uh, on the lawn patio. Uh, and they had good opportunity um, for mitigating their impacts further from the uh, house closer to the wetland, where, if you recall, there is a fence line, but that fence line is not the property line. And again, having been on the property, it kind of makes sense because there's a bit of a dip after that. Um, so, uh, that fence predominantly from the prior owner, you know, sort of serving as that trap slash deposition area for probably past leaf blowings and, you know, mostly vegetative debris. It, uh, it could definitely use uh, some improvement, especially since the wetland is, you know, within probably 10 to, to 20 feet of that, you know, it's definitely a slope um, lower elevation situation. So that was the area they had picked and I didn't have a problem with the, uh, the area in terms of size. I didn't have a problem with the um, vegetation that was proposed, mostly shrubs. Uh, and I believe uh, we had reached a point collectively that there was no, no further comments from the board or, or myself. Mm -hmm. and, and nothing's changed since we had that discussion? That's no that would lead you to say that there, we should not be able to move this tonight or uh, yeah. require further discussion or review? Yeah, they didn't submit anything additional. I didn't require anything and I don't recall the board requiring anything. Okay. Um, then based on that summary and the earlier review that we made last month informally, uh, I would entertain a motion to approve the permit for 10 Gray Rock Park Road. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 
Motion carries. Okay. Uh, next, six Killington Street. Janice, you want to run us through the same way? Sure. So uh, there was an existing patio. Um, that patio never received a, a permit from our department. Um, so that was why uh, the entire uh, area was included um, as part of the application and the mitigation because they're proposing now to put a deck over that, that patio, but we didn't consider a pre-existing development for those reasons. Um, it's all located within the wetlands buffer. Uh, they had submitted a mitigation plan. I don't recall any uh, comments to the uh, proposal in terms of the application that was going to be the project. As far as the mitigation, I just had a couple of comments, which on March 14th, um, the architect, uh, Philip Holub, um, in speaking with the uh, landscape architect, they confirmed um, for me, I didn't care which species of oak, I just wanted to know. They said they were gonna go with pin oak. I said, that's fine as one of the trees they were gonna plant. And in consideration of the uh, proposal to consider some ferns instead of the herbs, just because they happen to be growing there, uh, ostrich fern, they felt okay with in terms of being able to uh, procure it and they do admit that it's a little aggressive, but I'm not looking at that in a, uh, 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 that term is like pejorative because obviously it's going to be uh, in an area that's, you know, adjacent, uh, a Phragmite stand, <laughs> you know, next door. So I'm like, that. that's fine. I think that would be good cover. Um, the other species of fern I had uh, recommended that I believe was growing there was a marsh fern. And they said that's a little bit more difficult to, uh, to source. Um, and I was, fine with that. I don't, you know, if, if it's going to, if it's going to grow there, it's going to, it's going to grow there. So um, I could write those recommendations into the uh, language of the permit conditions, you know, reflective of the, uh, of the plan that was submitted, their mitigation plan. That's not a big deal for me. Okay. And that's what you'd plan to do? Yep. Okay. Um, so again, uh, any reason? Anything that needs further discussion uh, in your mind? No. Okay. Um, again, then, in, well, and based on that summary uh, and the the further detail on the planting plan that was discussed with Dennis and that will be incorporated into the body of the permit and based on the earlier discussion we had uh, yeah. that yielded a comfort level in, with the board on the project. Uh, again, I would entertain a motion to approve uh, this project at Six Killington Street. Motion to approve the project at Six Killington. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion's approved. <laughs> uh, is there some background noise? Somebody, there is, somebody there's, a, there's a meeting, there's a meeting on the other side of that wall in room B. Oh, okay. Um, they quieted down. <laughs> no. Not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, thank you. All right, three Melanie Drive. Yes, uh, so Alan, um was kind enough to uh, to show, which um, I should point out. That's uh, hello, Alan. You are, you are you are the professional that 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 showed up. Um, the other two applicants weren't. They didn't have to be represented. So I just want to point that out for anybody who watches the meeting and is interested in Alan Pilch. Um, well, if Alan, well, if Alan's here, <laughs> why don't we let him summarize where we were and what may have happened since? Sounds great. <laughs> give, best, you a break. Thank you. Give, give you a break for a couple of minutes <laughs> except you're on mute you're muted alan i oh, can't hear you that's good now you can hear me so um since since we last met um we actually have received the um 
the wetland permit from the New York State DEC because a permit was required. So they did issue that permit to us. Um, you know, this is, and th this essentially is to expand um, an existing deck along the rear of the house and to expand a small, like 113 square foot patio off the door of the rear yard. Um, and that's what this project involves to expand a deck to um, uh, by 423 square feet. It's, it's, it's really proximate to the, the rear wall and also expand the um, flagstone patio as well. Um, and so that's what's being proposed here. As I say, what we have received is the, um, um, we did receive the permit from DEC mm -hmm. for this work. And there's a mitigation area that's proposed behind an existing fence. It's kind of like in the path of drainage for a lot of the, the work that's being proposed. If I could share a screen if you like, but. Um, yeah, why don't you just quickly run through it? Hopefully I can. <laughs> this is what the property looks like presently. Um, where there's a small patio, about 100, and, what I say, about 111 square feet, and a small deck. And what's being proposed is to, let me just expand this a little bit. What's being proposed is the existing deck is to expand the deck along the rear of the house. Some steps going down to a new patio. The existing patio is sitting right here. That's the boundary of it. And so it expands a little bit in this direction as well. Um, and that's what's being proposed here. And some new steps and replacing deck boards because they're kind of, um, that's in poor shape, the term I'll use. I can show some pictures of it if you like. That's the existing patio there. You can see how tiny it is off the back door. Um, that's the deck. The, it's basically just gonna be repaired, the deck boards. Uh, the mitigation areas proposed in here. Um, you can see some of the, there, there's some frag in there. There's also some um, uh, bulrush in here as well. And that's kind of like the view from the back of the house. Um, the patio is here, that's the rear facade. Basically it expands the deck to about here and some steps down to a new patio. Okay. Dennis, have you had a chance to take a look at the state permit? Yes. And what's your sense? What's your reaction to the mitigation that's proposed? Yeah, I, I didn't have, um, I, as Alan and I were speaking, my, uh, I didn't have an objection to the, to the plan. I just didn't know if, um, in, in consideration of the area, if it, if it made more sense to put it closer to the wetland versus the fence, but that was something that was to me still open for, for discussion and frankly willing to work with the owner uh, of, of the property if they felt stronger about one versus the, uh, you know, versus the other. Um, and apparently, you know, DEC uh, had no issue. And what's always funny about DEC permits is, is that um, they have until December 31st of 2028 to complete this complex multifaceted uh, <laughs> project. So, you know, I, I, Hurry up. I have more than, right, yeah, more, more than ample time. You know, one of the reasons the mitigation was placed where it is, is just to have the, the space to try to control, you know, I mean, typhoidifolia, bulrush can, can be sort of invasive in a way. Sure. It does spread. And, um, there's some frag in there too. It gives a little room there to sort of be able to control it without impacting the mitigation area. That, that was my concern. So is the only, the only clearing of invasives going to be in that defined mitigation area or will other invasives be clear? I, honestly, it's just turf cover. They've, they've been mowing it. So. No, I mean, the, the, but all the Phragmites, is that? Oh, well, that's actually in the wetland proper. So that's like not that's deep touched. in there. No, because that, yeah. yeah, that would require right. a lot. Okay. 
and certainly would require probably a revisit to DEC if you guys were going to be mucking around in there, right, Alan? I mean, that's for sure. Yeah, it's so that one too. Exactly. Yeah. yeah no, and I, yeah. I, I don't think it rises to the level that you have to. So, for sure. Yeah. That's correct. And the mitigation planning area is currently a mow lawn. All right. As said, Dennis, with the mitigation that's proposed uh, and that's contained in the state permit, would that would that be sufficient for your purposes as well? Yes. Okay. Um, well, my recollection was that we wanted to hold off. Uh, even if we were satisfied uh, with the application itself, we wanted to hold off until we heard from DEC to make sure that we weren't going to be working at cross purposes. Right. But, um, but in view of the fact that the, the permit's been issued and that uh, you don't find anything objectionable or inconsistent with the mitigation requirement that you, know, you would think makes sense uh, on our side, um, is there anybody else on the board has got any questions or uh, concerns at this point? No. No? Okay. Uh, then I think that uh, fortunately, uh, we are in a position to move forward with this one as well. So uh, I guess we're back to you, Ivan. I will, uh, I will, I will move for to- For entertaining uh, a motion. Yes, I, I will move to approve the, the application at Three Melanie Drive. That's where we're at now, yeah. Yep. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good. Then, again, based on the previous discussion with the update tonight, uh, this is approved, and Dennis can go ahead and issue the permit. Thank you very um, much. Okay. Uh, the COVID application, there's, again, there's no address on the agenda, but um, there is in the minutes, 248 Quaker Street. Right. right. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'm also on this one. Okay. All right, Alan, you're up again. <laughs> Uh, if you like, I can share a screen. That'd be great. To show you. And hopefully you can see that. Oh, I'm, I'm assuming this is visible, correct? Yes. It is. Excellent. Uh, so what's being proposed here um, There's a, uh, on this house, uh, is most of it is really just uh, creating a second floor. The, the existing house is here. Quaker Street is here. There's a long driveway. This is the duck pond here. There's a stream which flows southward under the driveway um, uh, into the duck pond. And what's being proposed here is a second floor addition to the existing house. And also, um, an ex I'll call it an expansion, create a small porch of 65 square feet. The, 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 the expansion of the house is entirely, it's really, it just adds a second floor over what is currently a one and a half story house. And so there's no um, expansion of it at all. The only thing that's being expanded is the, um, um, is the porch, because right now it's a very tiny porch and just provide a, a, a better entry into the house. And for mitigation, what's being proposed is, as you can see also the property line is very, very close to the driveway edge here. So there was very little opportunity to do any form of mitigation here, but there is this long lawn, there's this large lawn area, which kind of drains toward the wetland here. And so what's being proposed is to remove a segment of lawn and create a mitigation area here, basically to create a riparian buffer, which doesn't exist right now. Basically the lawn comes right up to the stone wall along this location here, at least here at any rate. And I could show some Photographs, if you like. Uh, we're right. actually familiar with it. Yeah, yeah I, th I think, okay, I think that would be sufficient. This yeah. is sufficient, Alan. Sure, yeah. that's fine. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I think we recollect what happened and uh, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, unusually shaped property. Uh, <laughs> and remember the conversation about why the mitigation was being placed where it was. But 
I think that we were all comfortable with it the way it was as of the last meeting. Does anything happen since? Any changes to the application? Any further conversations with Dennis or anything like that that might affect the decision to go forward? Um, there there be no changes to the application. I'll let Dennis speak. Yeah, I have no, no issues. Okay. Uh, any questions, comments from the board? Yeah. No. No? Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think we were pretty comfortable with this one as well. So um, I'll entertain a motion to approve this one. David? Motion to approve the proposed application. And lots of. 120. Right. I don't the know the address. By the time. Right. By the Kobe residence. Second that. Okay, second. Yeah. Is that 10? Yes, second. I second that. Good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. Thanks, Alan. Thanks for Thank coming. You, Alan. I guess you're on, Paul. Where are you going? These are the best. Okay. Low tech. So let me, that's a little bit of place to put this. I would say probably right yeah. about there. This comes into play. That's fine. few months ago present a project for an addition to his house and renovation to his house with his architect and it was asked at that time uh, to have the wetlands delineated and also to come up with a mitigation plan that would be appropriate for what's being proposed and so I was asked to uh, delineate the wetlands. Uh, you may remember uh, Aaron Park on the adjacent property a couple of years ago with a wetlands uh, issue with the Retaining wall. Uh, he's the abutting neighbor, anyway. So he has probably some familiarity with the, the site. Um, I'll pass this around, but I prepared a wetlands map report, which you have, and it shows uh, oh, here's the wetlands map. And these are photos of the wetlands area and the public mitigation area. These are taken from the report. Certainly, can look at it. But the property is uh, uh, an elongated property. You've got on the road front there, driveway comes in the house. And it's pretty gentle in the road, uh, off the road in the front yard area. But then it starts to slope down to about the central portion of the site where there's an in-ground swimming pool. And then it slopes down again to the back of the property. The area that I have unshaded is lawn area. The area that I have shaded in the wood, uh, brown, is the woodland area. And uh, these are the structures. There's a shed, a ground swimming pool, and a house. Uh, excuse, excuse me, Paul. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm not able to see what you've got up on the easel, but I've got... Oh, boy. I've got, the, the, well, but I've got the hard copy of the plans in front and of then, me. Then you've got Same enough. photos. Yeah. So which yeah. plan is that that you've got up on the easel now that you're looking at? That's the mitigation plan. The, the, the one that... The, the, the one that's marked existing conditions and mitigation plan? Correct. Correct. 
Just so, want to make sure I was looking at the right one. Yeah, you know, since you you only got that one, then I'll these gentlemen can look at this map here. But uh, uh, this plan I have in front of you is an existing conditions map and a mitigation planting plan. And based on delineating the wetlands, I've depicted on this upper left corner the existing conditions, and you have a water course that comes under Kitchell, clips the uh, corner of the property, and then continues through the neighbor's property. And that's shown in one of the photos that I gave you here. And um, there's a wetland in the back with a brook running through it. And um, there are some trees, singular trees, fairly large ones with tree wells in the front. And then in the backyard area behind the uh, shed, there's a, an area of lawn with just a few trees. And that's the area that I've chosen for mitigation, shown here. There's the shed, and then this is looking back across the mitigation area. And the reason why I chose that area is this is pretty well wooded along here. And this slope, which is really on the neighbor's property, is, is all, all wooded. There really wouldn't be any good opportunities for doing any mitigation here. Gary's proposing an addition off the side of the house in this level lawn area. So what I thought this might be a better area to consider for mitigation. Why? Because the there's a lawn cover there, but it's pretty, it's getting like my the top of my head. It's getting real thin. And it really needs a little beefing up. It has no understory and the ground cover is sparse. Uh, and so with that in mind, I proposed of 2,100 square feet of mitigation, which I've shown up in yellow here. And in a, an enlargement, the proposed mitigation plan. And these are the existing trees for reference. So here's the existing trees. There's lawn, patchy lawn, as you get towards the woods. There's the existing trees here in enlargement. And then I have a proposed mitigation plan. It's color coded. And the key up here shows the existing trees, ET, shrubs, 21 shrubs I'm proposing, and 240 herbaceous covers, and some seed mix. And it's all color coded, so the way you would read it is your BYB, a paper, you go down here, and there it is, there's where they are. And the key tells you how many are in each area. So this would be BYB slash three, so net planting area. That's how many shrubs we've got. I have a uh, seed mix that would be prepared on the ground that's unvegetated and really to beef up the ground cover. And I have planting notes, which shows from A to Z how we would go about doing this. We put an erosion control fence right along the edge. We remove any, any lawn that's in the exact planting area by hand, held tools, and then install the plantings as, as shown. In the details. We'd have a monitoring program when it's all done. We would prepare an as built, if you will, of the proposed mitigation, photographs, and then submit it to the town so you have a document of what it is that was finally prepared. And then we'd have a monitoring report that we'd install at the town at our own expense, reporting on the plants for growing three growing seasons. And if at the end of the second growing season, there's plants that are in disrepair or wither, we re replace. So we at least have, you know, 85% uh, or better uh, in, in place that last year of reporting. We'd also have a prohibition here and we stop using, I would hope that they're not using them, but we're saying they're not going to use any herbicide pesticide applications in the wetland and wetland buffer area. And uh, a maintenance program, a very simple maintenance program. Uh, where the owner has the ability to go in and just take care of any debris or invasives that may uh, get in there in the course of uh, the plants getting established. Uh, so if you have any questions, I'd be happy to uh, field them. But, uh, I think it's a pretty good area to do the mitigation. I mean, I don't think it's really productive to do it right in the house. There's, not a lot of wiggle room up there anyways. And to be honest with you, I think you'd have to keep that fairly clear to get around that side of the house. I think that's a better bang for the buck to go in the back there where there's a 
pretty good water course that we'd like to protect. And what is the total what? amount of impervious uh, area that, that's being added? Uh, oh, I have I have a table up here, but it's uh, for, about uh, 440 square feet is the addition. Mm -hmm. And we're proposing well beyond that as far as that. So we're, we're way over the top. What is the addition? Down. What is what is this? What's going to be added? I believe, uh, I mean, there are architectural rentings that were submitted. Uh, it's a proposed one and a half story. Like, it's, 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 yeah, what's, it's, what's in this one and a half story? It's just curious. Oh, the interior? Well, yeah, like, what are, like, what's it going to be? I, I, you know, I can't speak as to where it would be, but in the layout of where an addition will go, it's probably another a study or, or, or okay. something of that sort. Uh, it wouldn't be a kitchen. Because it's off this, the, the house really is, is the, the long part of the house is on the road front and it's, it's like a wing over here that he's putting on it. So that, that wouldn't be where your, your kitchen would okay. be. So I, I think it's probably like a study or, okay. or uh, rearranging can, for oh, bedrooms. Excuse me. Hello? Yes. Yeah, uh, good day. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from the architect's office. Oh, there we yeah, go. Yeah. That's the man himself. Okay. okay. Did I so, misspeak? Yeah, I mean, if you want, I could I could bring up the screen and show you what we're adding. Absolutely, that would be appreciated. Thank you. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, on the left hand side here, we're adding on um, a semester. It's a, in this, in this area right here, the master bedroom, we're adding on a master bath and a, a hall bath. And if I could go, I'll just go down to the floor plan so you could uh, get a look at now, that. There you go. Yeah, now you get a better idea what's going on. Wanda and Bernada can do it. Wanda and Bernada can do it. I told her I'd get back to her with the details. Okay, so. There's the master bedroom, and this is what we're adding on. We're adding on some walk-in closet, the master bathroom, and a hall bath for these other other bedrooms. And in the back, we're just adding a uh, off off the wood deck. We're adding a, 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 a screen porch in the back of the house. And that's outside. That's of the out the yeah. setback area. Yeah, that's not in the buffer. Right. Right. No, no, that's is, just that's, is that screen porch connected or there. is that free floating? It's, you go across the deck and then the screen porch is there. Okay. You know, I guess an, an, so it's, it's like an independent. It's like a separate, separate, it's separate. an independent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Dennis, you have any mitigation plantings? I am. I just had one question because I'm sorry I didn't check this. Have you guys you've submitted a building permit application to us for this? To the town of Newcastle? Uh, yes. Okay. And I, I this, this is not my I just asked because I know uh, for the perspective of adding a bedroom, the existing septic can accommodate that and that doesn't have it's to be. It's not a bedroom. It's, it's not, not a bedroom. It's, it's not, just a mess. It's a master bath. It's just yeah, bath off the existing bedroom. It's yeah. bath and closets. Then. Oh, it says renovate master bedroom, yeah. so it's not an addition. Got it. it it's okay. Not, it's not a bedroom. Okay. I, I guess the only question that you know that I would have is, uh, you know, is whether this is the kind of thing uh, that really should be done in the buffer. Um, you know. Uh, <laughs> It, it gives you a little pause, you know, obviously the, the mitigation plan uh, is, seems pretty robust, uh, but under the analysis of the, the ordinance, you don't get to the question of the mitigation plan unless there's a determination made that, uh, that the actual incursion into the buffer um, is justified. And, you know, they, this is a house, you know, that was grandfathered in, uh, was built before the existence of the wetland 
ordinance and houses like that are accorded, um, you know, a lot of leeway uh, in terms of uh, improving them. But to tell you the truth, most of what we see uh, is a request to expand a house to provide additional living area for growing families and things like that, um, where a, a house might not accommodate as much and uh, the applicant is looking to add a bedroom uh, and the incursion into the into the buffer there is, uh, you know, is justified by the mitigation plan. Uh, I, I'm just interested in finding out, you know, what you know, what does the board feel about, um, you know, allowing this kind of incursion, uh, whether it's adequately, uh, you know, whether there's adequate mitigation for it or not. Um, is this something that we want to be entertaining um, when it's basically, uh, I, I don't want to minimize it, uh, but, uh, you know, to some extent, yeah, it's a, it's an aesthetic improvement rather than, uh, you know, an, an improvement necessary to, you know, to make the house usable. Anybody have any thoughts? I guess I would pose that question to the architect and ask, were there other options considered and what was the thinking know. process to avoid going into the wetland if there was? The only place to add a master bath is in the oh. wetlands. <laughs> yeah, that was really, I mean, if you look at the plan, that's really the only place, you know, that you can add. I mean, this is, this is the bedroom now. They have a very small um, bathroom and the rest of the bedrooms is, are sharing a small bathroom. So, right, but I mean, but how old is the house? Uh, well, Gary might be able to answer that. I'm not sure exactly. Let me see if it's in the application. The house was built in 1957. Okay. All right. So for you know for 65 years, this is you know the the bathrooms and the closets were you know were sufficient for the people not, living there. Not not really because in today's standard, if you look at all the homes, the master bed uh, bathroom. It's smaller than a London phone booth, okay? <laughs> and in you try fairness, to not, in, in fairness, that's not what I said. Well, I'm just saying that I mean, this <laughs> house in today's market is this very different. Yeah. This, this house wouldn't be able to be built where it is in if it was built today. Because it's, it's within the buffer. As is the septic plant. Uh, one thing I, uh, I'd like to chime in, I, I suspect one reason besides the interior layout of the uh, house dictating where the addition goes, it's not as apparent looking at these maps, but the topography favors putting the addition in this location. If you put it in coming off of another portion of the house, it's a walkout in, in the back. So it, it, would, it would be probably a lot more earthworks involved uh, or a higher level to get up to the to that first floor. So from a topographic standpoint, that there's there's less site uh, work earthworks to be done. Perhaps is there another reason why he, he chose that side? Well, I mean, when the initial when the initial idea was floated, um, what was what was the conversation? I'm mean, was was there a recognition that this was something that would require this kind of permit because the construction in the buffer is? I think that's a question, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I would have to say uh, that uh, the application came in front of you and then this information was put in front of you at, at a later time. So, um, well, but this this information is only the is only the mitigation. Well, yes, but I mean the the, the wetlands 
delineation and everything was done subsequent to the uh, layout. So are you I think that, that was John's question. That was, so there, you, uh, was there an, an, an acknowledgement that the proposed work is in a area that is not for development? Right. If, if right. in the wetland buffer, we were not supposed to go in there. We're not supposed to build in there unless there's extenuating circumstances, right? Avoidance. Mitigation is the last of the steps to take. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why I was asking to the applicant what other thoughts there were, if any, to rearrange the layout to avoid going into the buffer area. Dennis, have you been out to the property? Yes. What are your thoughts? So, I mean, there, there's certainly, you know, I don't know the uh, interior of the house, but what's what's existing adjacent to residence was, uh, again, predominantly turf cover and relatively, as Paul was saying, like level, level to the residence. And then beyond that, um, you know, there are mature developed trees kind of to the front and, you know, moving to the side and then it slopes down fairly quickly and severely, uh, you know, to get to the brook. Um, you have septic in between the house and the pool. Uh, so there is, you know, there's only so far back that they could go um, with respect to A, what's existing in terms of the footprint and then B, you know, encroaching onto the onto the septic and the other side was their driveway. So this, this was kind of like the box they were limited to. What's the, uh, yeah, the distance that is enough between a septic field and a full structure from, from that? Right, with that setback has to be up, I, I don't think it's 20 feet, I think. 20, 20 feet? Yeah, that's what I think. Okay. So there could be space there for that. I'm just that as a reason wouldn't cover it. And then the the other question you're saying from this, I guess this is the west side, this is north. That's north. so the north edge, this property here slopes is, is a is a slope down to the brook. Oh, if you look at the topography, it's all there on the neighbor's side. You see how that goes down? Okay. And then you can see in the photograph that along the brook on the neighbor's property, you see the, uh, the that land to kind of the sloping up. Yep. Yeah. So you get a, it goes pretty thickly wooded slope, and then you're up onto uh, our property. So, so there'd be no trees clear. So let's say this one. this addition does go here. How does this slope then get protected from erosion and? Going down into the uh, runoff, coming down into the brook. Well, we're not touching it. I, I didn't say where. I yeah. just asked. How does that? Now that we have less ground cover to pick up whatever's coming off the house. Well, well I, I think the direct directional uh, 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 drainage is that way. way. Right. So, is there anything proposed to help mitigate any type of runoff or drainage down into the brook from? We're not proposing to do anything here. It's, it's woods. It's a, it's a good wood cover. And how is the drainage off the proposed addition being handled? I believe there's a, uh, the architect uh, has called for a uh, subsurface infiltration system. And I think it's shown on, on, this, on this plan. Um, we don't have this plan. Did I, did I we don't, we don't have the architecture plan. Well, it might be. Let me just, uh, if you don't mind, just a second. Sure. Uh, That's for the supply. Sounds good. I'm hungry. Give me that much cannolis. <laughs> Should I get cannoli for a. Uh, you have to go fast. Jonathan, my, my question is from the north. How, how does the runoff or the drainage coming off the roof of this new addition, and for that matter, then the rest of the house get handled? Uh huh. Right, they do have, yeah, they do, this is from the original plans. They have plans for cultivation. 
Right. And I think my only comment at that time was just to make sure that it's uh, it's distance from the septic fields was acceptable. I forgot what that separation distance needs to be from a stormwater so treatment the system to the septic. The yeah, system. they did. They did. They did show that on their. Uh, that okay, was the original so submission. Sorry about minutes. that. Yeah. Okay. So that's still it's still being considered. Yes. And what's the ground condition in this area now? What, what I keep, is there a picture of this spot now of what it looks like adjacent to the house? No, not in any of these pictures. No. It's, a, it's a lawn area. It's, open lawn. it's just grass. Yeah. And, and it's it's pretty pretty gentle. It's not it's not steep slope or anything. That might have been one of the reasons why. Uh, is that a full foundation? Uh, yes. Yes? Yes. Full basement foundation. There's a foundation plan. It's, it's, it's going to be a full basement and yes, we see. And and yes, the basement. Yes, it's a full basement. Got it. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. The soil types on this property, and, and it's on my map there, but the area around all the structures is we use the term eudorthens, which simply means the natural <laughs> soil profile has been mixed up by man. But the natural soil cover or the parent material underneath is a, it's riverhead soil, which is very well drained. So the good news about this site is we should have easy excavation and we don't anticipate exacerbating the uh, a runoff issue because you, those soils are known to have very good infiltration rates. So we kind of lucked out here to some extent. So Dennis, if, if this is a full basement and there's going to be full excavation here, mm -hmm. I would maybe suggest something more than just stakes and netting, but hay bales and or, uh, coconut mats or something be added for it. That something more than the detail just up top. So right. just right. Net. so, so it, like a stake hay bale and, and uh, stilt fencing in, in line? Or yeah. something reinforced, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's or maybe good. a second line further down to pick up whatever goes underneath. <laughs> and then my other suggestion would be any stockpile area happen outside of the buffer. Okay. All right. So that's a reason. All, all of this outside of the buffer is easy to do. Right. And is there a way that instead of running equipment all the way in front of the house and through the buffer, everything gets flipped off the driveway back here and done outside the buffer there? It's a good idea. So that this conversation is even assuming it would be accepted to be built in there, but um, right. just practically speaking, I, I think you flip the logistics around to the other side and avoid anything being stockpiled or mitigate minimize how much is being run through that buffer area. <laughs> but, but if we could get back to the basic issue here, um, I, I just want to clarify. So, was the answer to the earlier question that the initial plans were put together without recognition that this was in a buffer? I wasn't in the, you know, I didn't. Uh, my partner, my partner worked with Gary on this, um, so I don't know what else uh, was spoken between the two. Gary might be able to uh, answer some of those questions, but once again, if you look at the plan, this is really the only place, you know, 
Well, that's not the question. The, 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 yeah. question, the question isn't whether it's the, the only place. The question is whether it's necessary in the first place. And, you know, uh, well, I'm wondering, and I'm, I'm just wondering if, if the parties recognized up front that this was, uh, that this property was within the buffer and that the ability to develop within the buffer is extremely restricted whether this proposal would have come before us the same way as it's coming now if it was designed originally without recognition of the buffer issue well we knew it was in the buffer for instance, but, for instance but, the question is you know one of the questions is does it have to be the same does it have to be the full size that it's proposed to be made smaller to limit the amount of incursion into the buffer. Um, I mean, you're talking about closets. Looks like the you know, looks like the proposed closets are bigger than the proposed master bath. Well, it, it's just I mean, it's not the kind of thing. You know, development in a buffer is not supposed to be uh, is is not supposed to be proposed lightly. Uh, or for less propose, than, excuse me, propose what? Lightly. Well, we, we, uh, we designed the addition, which we felt um, would answer the needs of, of, our, of our client. Well, I understand that. And that's, that's what you should do. And if the, if, if a client you know, has a desire to do a certain project, then, uh, you know, an architect would do that. I would expect that. But if, you know, if at some point it became clear that the site, that it was, a that the site had limitations to it, I was just wondering whether, uh, you know, whether, whether maybe some, uh, you know, some changes might be in order. Okay, then that's something we'd have to discuss with uh, our client. Well, what what would you recommend? Well, uh, I don't uh, I don't necessarily have a recommendation. Uh, I just am concerned uh, about uh, the kind of proposal what's what's proposed to be built in terms of the use. Uh, and the size of it. But what, let me ask you a question. Um, at the original meeting in September, the board said come up with a mitigation plan. So why wasn't these questions raised then? Well, there was clearly something missing from the application. No, no, the plans were the same. But okay. The mitigation. So, you knew at that time, you knew it was in a buffer. I spent all this money to come up with this. Now you're bringing up something Wait, that should have been brought up at the first meeting. Wait, excuse Nothing's me. changed except the survey and the uh, mitigation <clears throat> plan. We didn't know where the buffer was. Uh, I'm not so sure that wasn't discussed at the first okay. meeting. The, the buffer, the we always knew the house was in the buffer. Um, the exact location uh, changed a bit, but but this was always in the buffer, and it, and it was and it was in the buffer at the first meeting. And you're saying that you knew it was in the buffer from the beginning. Yes. There's no place else to put it. I mean, there really isn't. I if mean, you have to put it some, if you have to put it somewhere, I understand that. Okay. Look, I I'm, think we got maybe. Maybe maybe I'm the only one that's got concerns here. Um, yeah. But it, it sounds like I'm going above the mitigation plan to compensate for this. All right. I think one way to look at it is like a scale. We're apparently being a sinner by putting an addition on one part of the site, but we're really being a saint hmm. with the mitigation and, and the degree to which we're doing mitigation on another part of the site, which we've elected to, to, to put the mitigation because we feel that that's where we get the best and most effective type of mitigation. 
And I always personally like to look at applications. Every property is unique. It's got its own restrictions, limitations, and pluses and minuses. But you, I, you, and I was on a board just like this myself for many years, and it's a scale. At the end of the day, if you can tip that scale in a favorable direction with what you're doing, if the project's approved, that's a win. And the, the area that they're proposing for the addition, I mean, man's ruined that already. It's a buffer, but it's a buffer on paper only. Uh, it's a lawn, it's a residential lawn. It's been regraded and planted and it's mowed regularly. Uh, Bambi must go there browsing once in a while, but other than that, its habitat potential is not a lot. It's, it, it's got too much exposure to residential property and usage. If you put plants or trees in that area, uh, any more than what's there around the house, it's, it's still got to mow around the house. In the back though, where there's really no need to have a lawn back there. And there is superficial erosion that's going on back there in the back of the property that's directed towards a water course, a nice water course, I might add if you look at the photos. That's where we're doing our mitigation. We feel that that's gonna be the most effective and we've elected to do a, a much larger uh, ratio of mitigation versus disturbance. The architect is also taking care of, or mitigating, if you will, for these disturbances with a subsurface infiltrator. That's a win too. He could even elect to pick up some, and he probably is. I I, I can't tell from the roof line, but. You know, some of those Coltec infiltrators are probably even going to be picking up some of the existing roof that's there. Well, that's a win. So, you know, I think there's a lot of pluses to the project, too. I can't speak for what the is, interior layout is. Is that the, the size. case? Is that the case that the that areas of the existing roof are being picked up by that, that uh, underground infiltration system? He, he, he may not be, he may not be aware of, of but it's, it, it's not unusual for that to happen because of the way the roofs line up. Well, they had to size the, the, the cul-de-sacs, right? Correct. Yeah, based on, based on what, whatever you wanted to capture. Right. Which is just another question. And we'd have to look at that to see if it, it's capturing an existing roof, but that's often done too. Um. So, John, from from my point of view, the the yep. idea of relocating the logistics to outside of the 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 hundred foot buffer, adding and confirming that the Coltecs are picking up the house, mm -hmm. the new addition, and the existing. Or some of it, I, I can't. Oh, I, I'm I'm suggesting yeah, yeah. the new the new edition and the existing. Yeah, it be considered. All right, and yeah. then I I still would ask yourself to take a look at that area now and what other what else could be done to mitigate the possibility of erosion, runoff, going down that steep slope to the brook. I don't know what the answer is. I'm, I'm yeah, posing we'll, it as we'll a take, question to, we'll be, take a look at it. to be looked at it's not, it's not, it's as a way to it's, uh, address a concern that if the area that this proposed addition is occupying is functionally a, a lawn, I mean, I, I certainly think we can do something to address that. No, I agree. I can't tell you anything about the, you know, the closets, though. I, but, you know, but it, the, those would be the questions I would raise mm -hmm. for uh, the applicant consideration. Okay. David, when you mentioned, when you say the logistics, so the gray area to the south, where they're coming off the driveway mm. and, and going to the front of the house yep. to get to the addition, yep. 
I'm saying flip that to the other side of the house so it's out of the setback. Gotcha. And the stockpile and all the, you know, material and, and soil storage is outside of the wetland setback, not within it. As well as the, the machinery, where the machinery is going to be. But that's just a temporary amelioration, right? Correct. It, it's during just, construction. just logistically just during, construction. during construction. Right. And, and being that they're building the gazebo in that same area, I would think it's, yep. it's going to be impacted anyway. So, right. And, and then they kind of walk themselves out when they put, I, I think the plan should show the, the call text in it. Because that might, depending on where it is, also impact some of the buffer area. It looks like it's, remember it says existing patio on the plan. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's just a little bit downhill of where the Caltech infiltrators go. So they should show that on here. Yeah, it should be uh, yeah, complete, yeah, yeah. complete plan. But I, I would think that's not unreasonable. No, it should be, everything should be consolidated. So just to be clear, you want us to use, you can still see the screen, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you want us to use this area to get to the, to, to get to the excavation? Yes. Correct, my suggestion is just to flip the logistics to the other side of the house, the north side of the house, to yeah, avoid well, all the only the, thing is, the, the, the septic tank and the piping is back here. I, I don't know. I'd be a little concerned about going over that. I, I, whoever your excavator is, I'm sure can come up with a way to. You can plate over it. Exactly. No, to, no. to bridge over wherever the, the discharge pipe is to, to properly get the backhoe across. Okay. Whether he pontoons it, plates it. I mean, looking at the plan, the only thing that you have to really, really watch out for is the tank and the line going out to the fields. But it looks like all the construction work is upslope of the existing fields, according to that plan. So, yes, the plan is a pontoons. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not a, a problem. Laid across. I'm, I'm, I'm not guessing we're talking about a big, a huge machine here. Okay. Anyway, that that I, I would like to see those thoughts put into into that. Right. And and the soil storage outside of the buffer zone. Yep. Yeah, that could be right up at the uh, front lawn there. Yeah. Okay. Is anybody else concerned about the size of this at all? So. I don't think it makes a difference if it's even a little smaller. I don't think it right, does it? If if the assumption is <coughs> well you have said if the area was a non-functioning yeah. wetland area, I'm less concerned about changing the size of it as opposed to right. addressing right. the impacts the on the right. you could so do both. Side. Size you, size matters. You could you could do both too. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. I mean, I would be, you know, as long as we're going to go back and think about this a little bit more, um, to tell you the truth, I would be a, a lot more comfortable if some thought was given to uh, decreasing the size uh, and maybe maybe the changing the layout a little bit of, of, of what's being proposed in the addition. Uh, well, that's that, that's uh, those, these are general comments, and I don't want to keep coming back and back and back. I would like to resolve this. Well, um, I, I don't want to. I, I don't want to tell you how to redo your project, and I don't want to impose my aesthetic feelings or the board's aesthetic feelings on the applicant. Uh, we're just letting you know what the concern is. I think that you've, I think that you've been able to, uh, to ascertain or to infer that there's some level of comfort with the project, despite the fact that, uh, that 
this kind of incursion is not encouraged. Um, but, and, you know, as, uh, as Paul was pointing out, you know, there are uh, very, some, some very positive aspects uh, to it that weigh in favor of us approving it. But, uh, you know, if we're thinking about it a little bit, uh, I would just feel a lot more comfortable uh, if I saw that there was some thought given to trying to minimize the amount of incursion into the buffer with the, uh, the addition itself. Sounds like a pretty clear direction. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that, let me bring over your location. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. It was just on. That's why. Right. Best one of the best lines. It is. Take one to go. Trying to quit. I'm not, I got to fight. I, I had a wake up call recently. I just decided, you know what, I got to just like. Bread was in the middle. I love bread. Come on, there's no point in breads and things like that. Just like that. But, uh, so where are the cannolis from? Uh, from uh, the Chicos. Oh, uh, nice. Yes, Whether you go away from the Paul or make a circle. How long are you doing that? Dennis, you want to tell us what's going on with uh, the planning board in Hearts Gravel Road? Sure. In Westchester County. Um, so that application requested to be adjourned from the prior, from the last planning board meeting. So at that point, why it was officially adjourned from this meeting, not to discuss the application and the primary reason, take care of Paul today. So when uh, I believe they came to us with two pre-application meetings for a proposal. Is this, is this the house next to the Chapqua yep. tennis? Yeah, the tennis the entry, pushed right the up red, against the, the road. red yep. house. Exactly. You, know, you can't build there. So, <laughs> well, what happened was we... We, 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 had, we had two pre-application meetings and both showed the location of a, of a new residence fronting the driveway and talking about demolishing this structure. And when they came to us, the application team, they spoke uh, of presenting this to the county, getting feedback, presenting this to DEC, getting feedback, and they made it sound like that that feedback wasn't negative. So as we're getting ready um, to put this, you know, before the planning board, uh, or obviously it was on the agenda, the town engineer decided to call Westchester County just to ask, you know, I just want to make sure that, you know, we're all on the same page that, you know, this applicant, you know, is proposing a new house and the septic is going to be, um, you know, in the DEC buffer. We know the existing is in wetlands for the existing house. And, well, the feedback we got was some miscommunication because um, the county communicated to the applicant that, yes, we would consider a new septic in the buffer for the residents that you see existing that is pushed up against hard scrabble road as a hardship because there is an existing residence and we can't deny them the opportunity for a septic. And we agree that where they were proposing it was better than the existing 
probably catch basin, cesspool, or whatever they had. Uh, we have no idea what's down there or where it was. So the county, when the town engineer communicated to them, well, they're proposing an entirely new house, an entirely new, new location. That became an all bets are off response, uh, which even prompted the county to call the applicant, which surprised us because they were like, you know, we're not sure what was discussed, but we're letting you know is now. Is this applicant the current owner, or did they recently buy it? This is a, another uh, newer um, owner. So the county did make it clear that, you know, the ownership does not create the hardship. Uh, I think the term they used was that mom and pop had been living there for 25 to 30 years, and now the son wants to continue to live there or take over the house or something to that effect. That they do consider the narrative, you know. In, in is, that, is that the narrative, or is it? A no, it's not the narrative. No, a developer bought the property and it is. Yes, trying to so bought it on the, the yeah. next thing that they Correct. could put something in there. Correct. Correct. I can add to Correct. the narrative. Correct. I lost my virginity in that house. Is that right? Yes. yes. <laughs> that's, 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 that's <laughs> Wait, Ted, speak up. I didn't hear that. <laughs> We're being recorded. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Too close to the road. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. A true story. <laughs> Was the house yeah, occupied at the time? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, it's not occupied now. You, you can basically say that. And you know well, what's interesting too is, you know, I mean, I, I shared my 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 memo with you, which obviously was, you know, uh, I didn't even really go through an evaluation. I was more looking at like items that required administrative completeness. And one of them is, you know, the structure dates back to whatever. So there is some sort of SHPO concurrence that's needed before you decide that you're gonna just demolish that. And yeah, Ted, do you know anything to about the history of that So building? I mean, that, that complicates that. What? Do you know anything I mean, about the history can, of that building? I don't know, Wait, but they need I can't, that. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I said, do you know anything about the history of that building? Well, I knew the besides the your personal history. <laughs> Keep going, John. The story is getting better. <laughs> I knew the family that lived there uh, when I was of age. Uh -huh. um, I mean, no, I, I the history. I mean, I've been out there showing it. Uh, I, I, but I anybody I showed it to, I said, don't even bother. You can't. That my my take on it was that you can't. You know somebody coming in there and wanting to do anything it's not i don't know how you would do anything honestly i think the only way to quote unquote do something is to buy the parcel next door further up moving towards the student club and merge the lot lines because then that parcel is at least pushing you further out of the buffer and i think yeah. gives you more opportunity and i believe you know this application team you know having been here now four years in june they've cycled through a few. And so you speak to some of those people and like, yeah, I was part of the team at this point. And gee, it's funny, we suggested that. And, you know, so there's, I think there's opportunity, but it may not be with like your point, Ted, with the as is version of the, of the parcel. I mean, it's one thing if you were to go in there and renovate the existing structure and, 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 you know, deal within what has been existing. Right. But if, it, once you knock it, that down, that's your all bets are off. Correct. You want to is the existing somewhere. structure sound? No. Um, no. No, no, no idea. I would say that they don't even let you in. Likely it. not, but yeah. I mean, it's yes, you can go in it, but they don't let you because it's dangerous. But yeah, I, I mean, that always struck me when, you know, we used to, you know, when my kids were little, we used to go to Chapel Swimming Tennis all the time. And I always wondered about that building. It, it seemed to me that the, the wetlands surrounding it must have encroached on the building, on the property over the years. Um, Otherwise, it's in a pond. Yeah. But it must have been a more viable piece of property, you know, when the house was built. It, but, it was. It, it was more viable a long time ago. It looks like a New England grist mill now, though. Like when you look over, you know, when you see the wheel like spinning, like for the stream that parts that hits the structure, that's what it is to that side to me. And that's kind of hurts me. So if, if I'm reading this right, the only portion of this parcel that's outside the buffer is the extreme northeast corner. Yes. 
So that's the part that's right on the driveway, one corner right on the driveway. Uh huh. Uh, right. You know who? You know who lived across the street from that? That drive. Right, right outside the driveway, but yeah. Across the driveway was Bill Flank's house. <laughs> You mean the parcel close? Oh, across the street, across, across, no, the, across, the, across, across the, the driveway to CST. Yes, yeah. across the CST driveway was where, where where Bill and Sandy lived for 40 years. I mean, you really have to get somebody who understands wetlands and, and, and you can do septic systems in wetlands, but I would, I don't know if that's really the question. The no. question is a new house. A new house. Then, yeah, right. and yes, an existing house you could certainly. There are systems, and we were talking yeah, about it in the office. Right. But no, it doesn't give you the right to take an undeveloped or piece of property or uh, the undeveloped portion of a piece of property to relocate, right. and then have your septic also in the buffers. Like, hold on, is, it, is it acknowledging the hardship of an existing house, but not a replacement? Right. Right. Yeah. That. Yeah. Okay. So besides, I, ho I hope whoever bought it had some kind of contingencies. Well, they, they had to have. They'd be idiots not to. From the uh, from the description I, I received, I think it was the um, I believe the architect made the purchase, and now the applicant is a friend of the architect. So I, I don't know if he's. Yeah. They're trying to do it together. Kind of thing. It says it was constructed in 1805. Yeah, when it was on, and then it, it, Oops. I think sorry, it's well, right. well, right. Hence the, the shippo comment. Because I'm serious. They, 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 no, no, no. Occurrence from them before you touch that. I wouldn't. I, of course. I've shown. I showed it a bunch of times, but I said to, and people always ask me about it. I said, don't bother. That was always my tremendous amount of work. Yeah, it's just not worth it. My daughter's friend. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could rehab it though. As existing, and it could be the a, a good rental property or something. If you rehabbed what it is existing, it's it's definitely got value. If but to go and knock it down and do something new makes no sense given all the new regulations. Okay. So what is it that we're being asked to to do at this point? Nothing. Nothing, because we imagine that you know, there'll be an entirely new application right. if they wish to pursue it, because it sounds like the county is not going forward with this. Yeah. Yeah, Ivan, this was the this was the first of the um, the new projects that we were going to get as a referral from the planning board. You know how we used to do that all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Dennis has talked to Bob Kirkwood uh, and in-house and I think we're going to start up uh, with that again on projects that are before the planning board but have wetland aspects to them uh, we'll get to take a look at it and give our thoughts make recommendations and have Dennis draft a memo presented to the planning board like Steve used to do uh, on, on those yeah, Steve, Steve's on this project I'm yep. not surprised We'll put the fee generator for him because <laughs> it's, it's got a long road. Yeah. I, I hope Steve did not have a contingency in his contract. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, the only other item worth mentioning is uh, you guys are on for April the 11th with the town board to talk about Upper Mickle Dam. I know you had mentioned that you wanted to wait, John, until you returned. So, uh, yeah. That is a Tuesday. Um, don't ask me where on the agenda, but I just know that I was able to get that penciled in, and I know that that's the day. I All assume right. it'll be during the work session. But and and so. how? Um, I guess we can we could have this conversation offline, but um, exactly, you know, how that meeting is going to work, what they're going to be expecting from us in the way of preparation or uh, attendance. Do they want all of us there? Um, right. When did you say that was the 11th? Yes. What time was that? The work sessions usually start at six. And I'll, I'll have to get back to you on that, John, because um, Look, it's drinking. 
We've been. Uh... <laughs> Where's our wine? What? Where's... You're it drinking very, wine. You're drinking very long trip. trip. Hey, you know you got. To... <laughs> we you can't do that on camera. <laughs> I'm not on town property. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll probably speak with, you know, the town engineer, because we've been involved. We were just in a, a call on Friday, you know, with the consultant and we're kind of going over, um, you know, the preferred access. Uh, we have a property owner off of Croton Dam Road that's willing to let us uh, use their property, frankly, for access and egress to the area. Uh, in return for, you know, the usual new driveway, change some drainage, uh, try to improve uh, line of sight coming out of the drive, out of their driveway to 134, all relatively minor uh, requests mm -hmm. in consideration of what they're going to let us use the property for. But I would think that we, I mean, we would want some background material in advance as well. Right. So um, <laughs> at this point, uh, and I'm just letting you know, like this is how far that sort of the design has gotten. So they have um, ideas as to uh, the last meeting we attended. We still haven't done the pre-apps yet with the state, DEC, and Corps of Engineers. But in essence, what they feel the you know dewatered pond after removal of the sections of dam would look like where they're looking to, um, looks like they're not looking to take any material off site. So looking to reutilize that in some way, um, you know, either to create areas of differing elevation, obviously the majority of it would be in wetlands. Um, an issue has arisen with respect to some of the sediments near the dam, not uh, meeting requirements for clean disposal for lead. So that's another, uh, mm -hmm consideration uh but what's the town board has the town board actually been involved in this yet or is the is the purpose of this meeting uh for the town board and us to be together in a meeting and hear a presentation from staff or from an applicant or something like that right what i think it's going to be is the last time that this was presented, it was literally just before the world changed. It was February of 2020. The consultant um, from Tectonic in this, in this room to the town board gave a slideshow presentation. And I'll be talking with Bob tomorrow to see if it makes sense for them to, to redo that. Because that was the only time that I recall something being presented to the town board. And at this point, that's three years ago. And the um, board is not... Has, has not taken it up itself since then. No, and a couple of members have changed, so some of them will probably be seeing it for the first time. Well, then doesn't it, I, I, would, I would think, I would certainly think on our behalf, it would make sense to, to have that as the basis or as the, the beginning of the discussion. I agree, and I, you know, as I said, you know, I just got the directive of, oh yeah, the ERV and the town board should get together for Upper Mickle Dam, and like, okay, so I was, you know, part one, date, time, coordinate that. Now, part two is, what, what are okay, we do? <laughs> I have a copy of Tectonic's presentation. Do you want me to deliver that? Do you want me to ask the consultant to come and deliver that again, as they did three years ago, which I think would be worthwhile. Um, so I just verify with Bob tomorrow to say, is that something that we could just, you know, go ahead and ask them to would do? Would it be possible for you to just email that report? To us? I, I could email the presentation. Yeah, that should That'd be, be great. Available. At least we could. Because that was already presented at a public meeting and it's just a slideshow and uh, it does include uh, a couple of the uh, schematics of you know what the um, proposed restoration area would look like following the removal of the subaquatic habitat. Yeah. yeah it'd be interesting. Just no, as, that's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm not familiar do that. with what this is about. So. That would be great. Okay. Yeah, that's a good start. Email presentation to the board. I will do that. I would say it's older, but I wouldn't consider it outdated. Not at all. I mean, it's the sounds like it's the place to start. Same driver. Yeah, exactly. Sure. At least we'll we'll have a place to we'll have a place to start, and we can ask some maybe semi intelligent questions. Right. Okay. That may be. Yeah, that's not pushing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Go Should ahead. we? 
Should we adjourn and stop recording? Or we have anything else official? If we go five more minutes, my wife has to walk the dog, not me. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have nothing. I know some applicants, um, at least one new applicant, who I think Paul's going to be working with, possibly two, uh, are interested in getting to me what they need to for a uh, submission for the April meeting. That's so I, I anticipate having one. That's okay. about it. Good. All right. So welcome back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry that uh, I'm not fully back in person tonight. <laughs> Um, but you know, hopefully we'll you feel all... much closer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you. Um, so, um, motion to dismiss. To, uh, to dismiss. <laughs> oh, <you're Donald> Trump. <laughs> <laughs> motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Everybody. <laughs>